Hi everyone, Shirtlad here. Over time I thought of multiple things to add to the main Gundam vs introduction video, but it was either too small to be a standalone release, or long enough to stretch the main one. That's why this is a patchwork of multiple smaller bits, so I'll be leaving the timestamps in the description if you want the specific one. I'll probably make more of these at some point, so stay tuned for that. Now back to the video. First I'd like to tell you about the categories your ranged attacks will generally fall into. There's a lot of units with various moves that can be outside of these categories, so this part we will just go over the general properties of some attacks. The most prominent are the beam shots. They fly fast, they pierce on hit, and are often the majority of shots flying your way. The amount of hit stun from the beam shots varies from weapon to weapon, but most can interrupt enemy movement on hit. Some beam shots do stick around though. The so-called Gerobis, which roughly translates to beam puking, or beam puke, are a type of long-lasting beam attacks that can deal a lot of damage, while being generally riskier to pull off. So, how does it work? At the start of a Gerobi, you often have a few startup frames, followed by a long ray of light that stuns and damages on contact. While the Groby is out and active, you are essentially stuck in place, making you a sitting deck. For this very reason, such attacks must be used with proper timing and positioning. Some of the Grobies also allow you to change their direction, making such attacks a bit more forgiving in terms of aim. Ballistic weapons like piercing properties of the beams, but still remain the decent pick. The most frequent types are cannons and machine guns, with the former offering a slow, yet deadly hits, and the latter opting for much weaker but faster hits. Their power usually varies from game to game, though their ability to ignore eye fields is mostly retained. Want something smaller? Vulcans are often your secondary weapon in the older games, while the newer installments omit them for all but a few units like the GPO2 Fissilis and the Egg Guy. Despite having a smaller lock-on angle and dealing significantly less damage, the Vulcans or Closing Weapon Systems are still a useful projectile option or when you are closing the distance or waiting for the other weapons to recharge. Some games allow you to fire them during boost steps, making them a viable zoning tool. On the opposite end, you have missiles. These offer more damage and the blast radius at the expense of projectile speed. There's two additional drawbacks to this weapon. The first being the fact that the enemy can just shoot the projectile down and the second being the lack of viability at closer ranges. Another type of ranged weapons in your arsenal are the remote controlled funnels, bits, dragons, however you wanna call them. These offer you an option to strike the enemy from various angles or spice up your regular shots. Assists serve a similar purpose, temporarily summoning a friend or two to help you on the battlefield. Some units also have projectiles that don't fit into the general categories like boomerangs, rocket anchors, grenades and scatter beams. Every time you shoot, there may be a minor delay, during which your unit adjusts the angle of a weapon. Such a delay may be inconsequential in some cases, while in some it might be your doom. That said, how do you keep such delays to a minimum? Depending on the angle, and sometimes on whether you are in the mobile armor mode, this delay is cut down significantly. The three easiest ways of angle correction is attacking, swiveling, the going forward or diagonally. If you shoot a shot out of angle, the angle correction can be longer and can even stop you in place, depending on the unit. In some games, this can also be used intentionally in order to mess with the enemy targeting. However, this gimmick can be pulled off in very specific cases. I want to add only two things in regards to the mobile armor mode. First being the fact that you can use the jump button to adjust its vertical trajectory at the cost of more boost. In the newer games you can hold the jump button to make it go upwards in the same way a plane would. Its older counterpart, Gundam vs Zeta Gundam, is a much more interesting case, since you can both let go of the jump button to fly along the ground, or hold it to gradually ascend. The ground hover can get you further at the expense of less boost. From the PSP generation onwards, you can also input the boost dash while in the mobile armor mode to descend. It's slower than falling, but it can help with angle corrections. And secondly, some mobile armor modes do change your attacks a bit. I hope this comes in handy, since I've spent quite a few hours on the script alone. That said, I'll see you in the next one. Shirtlad, signing out.